how great thou art.
Good morning, Cedar Grove. It's good to see you all here this morning. I'm going to give you a few minutes to get seated. Um, so. Everybody had a super great week um, and that you're able to relax and um, just have some time of rest and solitude and um, this weekend. Uh, I just want to share a little bit of scripture with you guys um, that I thought really went well with this song. Everything stems from scripture as, as it should anyway. And um, I realized while reading Psalm 104, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a garment, stretching out the heavens like a tent. So how great thou art really hits on that verse, but it's amazing because the song we're about to do also really hits on that verse, and it just goes to show everything we sing, every, every praise we praise should stem from God's word. So let's stand this morning and worship him after a word of prayer. Dear God, we just want to thank you so much for giving us our voices to praise you with, giving us our legs to walk on, and also just giving us the ability to see one another um, as friends and not enemies. God, I pray that you'll help us to always think of you in every aspect of our life and not compartmentalize your goodness and your faithfulness and obey you in everything that we do. Um, God, I just pray that we will, show, we will worship you in ways um, that isn't just standing and raising our arms and singing and praising. God, I pray that we worship you in the words we say and the actions that we do and in the thoughts that we think. And um, thank you so much again for this lovely day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen.
God gave us the gift of worshiping him. And the thing is, um, I think a lot of us can find the definition of worship. I think a lot of us think that worshiping is just putting our hands up and just singing and um, closing our eyes and swaying back and forth. And worship is something that he gave us. It's a way that we can love him in our obedience and our spiritual disciplines and our prayers and our thoughts and just the way we read our Bible every day, the, the way we evangelize and tell others about his goodness. So sometimes, sometimes in the midst of our worship, we sing. And most of the time what we should be doing is just praying to him and, and being obedient. And we should be thankful simply because of the fact that he chose to die for us. And he rose again to pay for our sins so that we can have eternal life with him. So let's sing about that right there.
song, and it'll explain what it is that you're missing out on if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. morning. Glad you're here to worship with us this morning at Cedar Grove. The ones to be in prayer for, uh, Michael and Donna, Alan, Linda, Roger and Merle, uh, Daryl and Brenda, Bill, Tom, Sue, uh, Marie, uh, uh, Mike Shoulder, uh, our pastor Shoulder, uh, and uh, Sharon's brother. Uh, thank the praise team for those songs. Great job. Uh, appreciate you. Uh, thank the ones uh, online for looking in uh, this morning. Um, the uh, 14th, uh, yeah, this month now, <laughs> uh, 14th of September, uh, not this coming Saturday, but the next uh, game night starts at 4.30 until, so we don't know what a time everybody's going to be done, but... <laughs> Starts at 4.30. There is a sign-up sheet upstairs here for uh, the ones coming and uh, the finger food, if you would uh, like to bring something, you can sign up for that as well. Uh, I think 
That is it. Let's please stand for our first hymn, page three. Page three. Page 23, this will, this will be our offertory hymn.
pray for that and just pray that we can get more people to come in and worship and learn, learn your word. Lord, I know today's lesson that we learned today was uh, Paul, Apostle Paul and everyone, they, they, they got beaten and hurt for preaching and saying the word and, and, and a lot of things in this life is not easy as we learn and grow in this Christian life and things are going to hurt us. And I know, Lord, you're going to give us strength through those days when, when we're hurting. And and, and, thing, and everyone, the crowd seems like they're against you. But, Lord, just uh, uh, thank you for the thank you for all that you do for us. And, and pray, pray for Maria as she left. Uh, just especially lift her up in prayer, Lord, and hopefully she'll get her blood pressure under control. Lord, pray for those that are not with us today. Just pray, pray for them. Pray for the folks that they'll get well soon. And Lord, we just pray for this uh, offering. Pray for the special music. Pray for our preaching. Open our ears. Open our heart. That we can receive your word and, and get hopefully and prayerfully get something out of it and not forget it as soon as we go out the door. Thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. you may be seated. <laughs> Lynn is going to sing for us today since she is here, right, Lynn? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, okay. It's crazy how God works, especially whenever you're taking time to spend time with him, um, how present he can be. Um, I was waiting in between a class, and I was reading in Psalm. What I've started doing is when I see something that reminds me of a song, I write the t song title down because it started happening so often. Um, and it's kind of a way I connect with God in that I recognize lyrics and worship songs that I really like, and I write it down, and it's really good to resort back to. But I was in Psalm 104, and in verses 20, it starts at verse 25. I read, Here is the sea, great and wide, which teems with creatures innumerable, living things, both small and great. There go the ships and the Leviathan, which you form to play in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die, and they return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. I think that just shows extreme. I, I marked in there, I, I grouped that whole thing, and I put obedience because it shows the sheer, I mean, listen, they look to you. They, they look to you to give them their food. They are dismayed when you turn your face away. They die when you say die. They live when you say live. That's obedience. Obedience to their creator. And I can't imagine that anyone would deny that this, this is creation and they, obe oh, they obey their creator. My point in this is my song that I'm about to sing, I sang it um, in a worship service after reading this, and I was like, wow, this is amazing because it's talking about the sheer praise that God's creation gives him. So let's just listen up. Yes. 
been good so far, hasn't it? Yeah. Glad you're here with us. I want to welcome you here. If I haven't done that already, it's not out of being rude. I just, there's a bunch of you. Uh, I try to get around. We have a children's church this morning. Yes, no. Okay, we are. So if you want to send your children with Miss Abigail. I appreciate having all our young folks here today. I really do. The, we're just missing one, I think. We'll have to get a, get a hold of him. <laughs> but it's it, it's such a blessing. I, I, I knew Liam was going to be here today, and I, I was sitting in the office, and I was getting ready to get up, and I turned around, and I seen a little Honda sitting down there, and I said, man, there's Andrea. And then it's just, you know, just so I, I'm so glad that they're all here today, and I'm glad you're here as well. If you haven't noticed, uh, Lynn keeps talking about obedience, 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 obedience. Now, I'm going to tell you, y'all have heard me say this before. I believe in first mention in Scripture when you come to something the first time it talks about something, that's where you're going to find the absolute basis of it. That you, you're going to get it down to its rawest form. And the first place you find the word worship, Abraham tells his servants, he said, you stay here with the stuff. The lad and I are going to go to that mountain yonder and worship. And they weren't going to go sing. Okay, he was getting ready to go offer his son Isaac, his only son Isaac, his son of his old age, no hope of having another one. But he was going to offer his son Isaac out of obedience to what God told him and knew that God had a plan. All right, that's good. This morning, Marty's going to try to be obedient. So there's Marty's sermon. How y'all like that? <laughs> y'all ought to be here all day. There's not an end to this one I got. <laughs> so take your Bibles this morning, and I want you to turn to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I don't do this very often. I've been praying about this for about three days. Because I know the Lord had dealt with me earlier in the week about something. And I just kind of jotted down some thoughts. And that's what you're looking at this morning in front of me. I want to pray. We need to remember those that are sick. Marie just left just a few minutes ago. Miss Sue's not here today because uh, she's been having her treatments. You continue to pray for her. Those treatments are doing what they need to do. And she's worshiping with us online each and every time we have service. So uh, you just. How you doing, Miss Sue? It's good to see you. Uh, oh, me. Uh, now her name just left me. Meanness. Help. Carolyn. Carolyn. <laughs> Remember Carolyn. Carolyn's not feeling well this morning. Mike and Donna. See, meanness, when she's not here, she's out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> How you doing, Miss Carolyn? Also, we need to remember Miss Brenda as well. And uh, so y'all remember each other. And those that are not feeling well. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we do thank you for this day you've given us. And Father, I thank you so much for just the opportunity to come and gather with my church family. This is my church family. And Lord, you allow me to come to church here and they allow me to be their pastor. And I thank you for that. And God, it's been good as almost like a homecoming is We've had almost everybody here today, and it's so good. We pray for those that can't be here today, those that are sick, those that's hindered in some way. We pray that you touch them and be with them. And, Father, as the theme's been this morning, obedience. And, God, I pray that you help me this morning as I try to walk with you. Lord, you know what I need. But, Father, I truly believe you know what the people that sit in here need. So, God, I pray, as I pray each and every morning, give us ears to hear this morning and give us eyes to perceive and a heart to understand and a willing will that's willing to follow you. Father, whatever needs to take place this morning, we pray that you'll work in our hearts to do that. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Like I say, this is some random thoughts this morning, so y'all just have to hang on. Luke chapter 10. I want you to look with me, starting in verse 38. It says, Now it came to pass as 
they went and they entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him unto her house. And she had a sister named Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about with much servant and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her there, therefore, that she might help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. As we see this opening up here, these two sisters, Martha's definitely the oldest. Martha is probably the oldest in the household. We know Lazarus was also their brother. And here she is. She's doing what she, do, she does. She's, she does, uh, we got a lot of these Marthas in our church. She does what Denise does. Always out helping people. And there's so many of y'all just always out helping people and going and doing things. And that's great. I'm glad we got a lot of people that serve each other, okay? Not knocking it. But here, Martha is looking, and she's got anxiety. How many of you ever get any anxiety? Mar Marty gets a little anxiety once in a while. I get anxious about some stuff. And uh, you ask Anita, I call it passionate. That's <laughs> That's what I say. She'll say, man, you're angry. I said, no, I'm passionate. <laughs> I'm passionate. And it's sometimes we get this anxiety. We, we get our focus on, and, and there's much stuff that we need to get our, our focus on. Listen to me. But we get our, our focus on all this stuff around us, the temporal things, temporal things. Last night, I'm going to tell you what. I had a meal Son, that was the, uh, I, Lord, how mercy. My wife cooked, she outdone herself. I ain't kidding. Rose, cream potatoes, man. Yeah. I ain't kidding. Huh? Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't invite nobody. I was eating like a hog. <laughs> if we would have had biscuits, it, I would have thought we was in heaven. The rapture done took place, man. <laughs> and it wasn't long. She made some homemade cookies. I had some cookies. You better be ready to walk tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you ain't heard the end of it. And then I had a big old bowl of ice cream with syrup and nuts and bananas. Man, I was, I was feasting. But I want you to know what? We started out with the most important thing, and that was that meal. And then we got to the sweet. A lot of times we get cumbered about and we get anxious about all this stuff over here that is this sugar and it's going to burn up. You know what I'm saying? It's just going to disappear. What did Jesus tell Martha? He didn't say what you're doing is not important, did he? No. Look what he says to her. Martha, Martha, you're careful and troubled about me. And she is. She's careful. She's, she's making sure that the plates are clean and, and everybody gets plenty of food and their drinks are refilled and your tea glass got some ice in it. That's one of the things my wife complains about. And never got no ice in the tea glass, you know. But she said, he says, you're, you're troubled about a lot of things. There's one thing that is important. And Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. I want you to look back up in 39 and, and look what that good part is. And she had a sister called Mary. Where do you find Mary at? She's sitting at Jesus' feet. What's, the, what's going on? He's teaching. She's listening. Folks, one of the most important things that, man, I'm going to tell you what, what, one of the most important things we can have, and Lynn said it this morning, is the Word of God. We, we've been given the Word of God to, to cherish, and it's a, it's a love story, man. It's a love. If you was in Vietnam or if you was in some other war somewhere and you was gone away from your love and your girlfriend sent you a, a love or your wife sent you a letter, man, you're going to be going, God gave us a love letter. And 
told us about himself and his great love for us and what he's done for us and what we have in him and all of this great stuff he's given us. He's also told us who we are. He's also told us the beginning from the end. Sometimes it looks like we're losing this fight, don't it? But he's told us the end, and we know that we're victors in Jesus Christ because he comes back the victor. Okay? And so she's sitting here, and she's learning. And one of the most important things we can do is learn about God. We got a lot of great ways of doing it. Man, I'm going to tell you what, I've been so impressed with the D life. If you're not involved in D life, get involved in D life. Okay? It's good, is it not? I see Amen. somebody shaking their head. Man, pe people shake. It's good. It's so simple, but it's good. You get in there and you got your fellowship, but you're forced to read God's word. We shouldn't be forced, but we are. We're forced to read it. And think about it and meditate on it. And it's good. And then we have fellowship and we have eaten. Amen. You know? And I like all them things. The very basis. And then we have Sunday school and we have preaching. And man, sometimes y'all have Laramie, so you have a good preacher, and the rest of the time you have to deal with me. Okay? <laughs> and but we have preaching. And anybody that's in this pulpit, we try to make sure that they're people that preach the Word of God, not about the Word of God or something they think about the Word of God, but what the Word of God actually says, okay? Because that's where the power's at, okay? That's where the power's at. Now, that's the basis. That's the foundation. And here we see... Mary, and this is the first place that we see Mary, and we see Mary, and we find her at the feet of Jesus listening to him. And Jesus said, this is the important part that will not be taken away from her. Folks, we need to build our life on the foundation, on the basis of God's word. And he gives us that. I, how many times have you heard somebody say, I wish this kid had a manual? Right? Well, they do. They do. It is. You, you held it up back. It is. Sure enough, you got it. You got a manual right there. How, how to operate it. Some of you women say, I wish my husband came with a manual. <laughs> right there it is, right in your lap. Right? I ain't going to say nothing about you men. Y'all know better. <laughs> I wish I could understand women. Let me tell you, right here it is. Right here it is. Right. The good part is that we learn about God, who he is, what he's done for us, and who we are and the world around us. We've got to build our life on a solid foundation. When we see Mary the very first time, she is here and she's building her life on the foundation. Now look what happens as we walk through Scripture with her. Turn one page over to chapter 11. Lazarus is dead. Jesus knows Lazarus is dead. Now this is going to be in John. Yeah, this is going to be John. Excuse me. John 11. I'll get there in a minute. Just hang on. Go to John 11 with me. I told you I'm, I'm working off of notes, man. Not even good notes. John chapter 11. We see Lazarus, he's died. Jesus is somewhere else at the moment. He waits until it's going to be four days before he gets back over there where Lazarus is at. We've talked about that before. That's part of the Jewish tradition. They thought that the spirit of somebody hovered around the dead body for three days, and on the fourth day it left. And so Jesus wanted to make sure that every kind of excuse that they could have, anything they could possibly say, was gone. Matter of fact, when he tells Martha to roll away the stone, she says, no, surely he stinketh. In other words, decay is done set in. Okay? But I want you to look. We're going we're to find 
Martha goes out and she scolds Jesus for not being there. I want to see that part of it. Verse 20, let's start there. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. So she had enough confidence to believe that Jesus could have healed her brother with whatever was going on. Let me ask you a question. If Jesus would have healed her brother right there, let's say he came the day he was sick. He came to the house, laid his hands on him, healed him like he did so many other people. Would her brother die? Yeah, <laughs> he's going to die eventually, ain't he? Yeah, that's what she wasn't looking at. We're all, it's pointed to man how many times die. Yeah, every one of us got a meter with the maker. I'm going to tell you that right now. We got, we got a meeting with the maker. We're one breath, one breath from eternity. You hear me? Every person sitting in this building, every person outside of this building, every person that's alive today on planet Earth is one breath from eternity. Period. We just had two young boys get killed down here in a car wreck just the other week. I'm sure when they got up that day, they weren't looking to die that day. No? Even people sick in the hospital, they ain't looking to go home today. You know? Pointed to when man wants to die. We are one breath, one breath away. She goes to him, Master, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. But I know even now, whatsoever you will ask God, God will give it to thee. So she believes that he can raise him from the dead, even right there. Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise again. That's future tense. Martha said unto him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So she's got confidence. That she's got good theology. I, I believe he's going to be raised eventually. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Let me ask you, do you believe that this morning? Do you believe who believes in Jesus Christ shall never die? Amen. I'm going to tell you right. We sung about it this morning. I'm going to tell you right now. When I, when, when I take my last breath and they tell you Marty Granger's dead, don't you believe it? He's more alive than he's ever been. Amen. He stepped right off into eternity. He stepped into heaven's portal, and now he's over there, folks. Amen. And he started into eternity. Amen? Amen. I'm going to tell you, that's... I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Now, I look, I ain't getting up a bus today, but I'm looking forward to it. I, I fear death not. I don't. I fear the method of death. Okay? I mean, you know, you take me and torture me for three or four days. I mean, I'm on, I'm on, I don't like that idea. But as far as taking my last breath, it don't bother me. I shall never die. I have eternal life. My eternal life started in Thomasville, North Carolina, when I asked Jesus Christ to save my soul. And he saved my soul. I received the Holy Spirit, and I received eternal life, and I have had eternal life ever since. And bless God, when you get saved, you've got eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. How do you like that? Mm. Let's go on. We got to get going because if we don't, we won't get done. I had not got an end on this. See, there's no end. There's no point. All right. Verse 27, she saith to him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. There is, there is the profession of faith that you got to make. And when she just said, she went her way and called uh, Mary, her sister, secretly and said, The Master's come and he's calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. But Jesus would not yet come into the town, but it was at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews uh, which were with her in the house to comfort her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth to the grave to weep. Verse 32. Then when Mary had come where Jesus was and saw him, will we find her at? She fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if thou had this been here, my brother had not died. 
Look at verse 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews weeping. At this point in time here, Martha, I mean Mary had learned about Jesus. She had, she had heard and she believed what Jesus had said. And at this point in time here, she comes to him and she lays her petition down at his feet. Because she's broken hearted. She's at a place where she's at the end of her rope here. Do you ever get to the end of your rope, folks? I mean, there's time when you just things seem hopeless and, and you're broken and you're 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 upset and you don't know what to do. But she took that foundation that she had and she came to the feet of Jesus and she laid her petition down there. And she cries out to him with her pain and her hurt. Every one of us, we need a place. I don't care who you are. I don't care how tough you are. Every one of us need a place where we can come lay our fears down at Jesus Christ's feet. And our pains and our disappointments and our heartaches, we need to be able to pour it out to him. We need one that cares for us. And the Bible says he careth for you. He loves you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I will always be with you. Amen. Isn't that good? <laughs> God loves you so much. And I don't care how bad things seem like they got. I don't care how much it looks like God has forsook this world and forsook you in this world. God still loves you. He has compassion on you. Man, I, I know in Luke's gospel, it says he looked and, and he saw the people and he had compassion. God, he sits on the right hand of the Father today and he looks at earth and he has compassion on us today. It don't matter if your marriage is falling apart. It don't matter if your cars fell apart. Me and Anita was listening to this song. It's an old song. I didn't know nothing about it. I, I come across it the other day. I, I listen to crazy stuff. And they're called the tractors. Have you ever heard of the tractors? Amen. Okay, well, I ain't never heard of the tractors. And they was talking about everything's falling apart. And it, <laughs> that's the way it is sometimes. It seems like everything's falling apart, don't it? Yeah. Christ still loves you. Here Mary is. She's at his feet. We find her pouring out her petition to him. Let me just ask you, what happens next? Yeah, he goes over to, he says, roll that stone away. Oh, no, we can't do that. I said, roll the stone away, and you're going to see the power of God today. Amen. And then he prays out loud, and he says, I'm praying not, not because I think you don't hear me. I know you always hear me. I'm praying so these people here can understand that I'm asking you, and you're going to do what I'm asking you to do. And he says, Lazarus. Now, he didn't say come forth, did he? No. There wouldn't be nobody left. Because he's the what? He's the resurrection. One day, he will call, come forth, and they will all come forth. Amen. Hell will give up its dead. The grave will give up its dead. The sea will give up its dead. The four corners of the earth will give up its dead. And they'll all come before him, and they'll stand before his white throne. Every one whose name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, go check out Revelation 20 if you don't believe what Marty's telling you. But he says, Lazarus, come on out there. And he did. He comes out like this. Because <laughs> they got him wrapped up. Now, I've got to put this in here because I always do this whenever I preach from this particular passage. What does he say? Yeah, who did he tell that to? Yeah, the people around him. See, God saves a lot of people. He calls a lot of people out of the grave, and then it's, it's the church to help people to start getting out of them grave clothes. We say, well, we ain't supposed to be just. No, no, we're supposed to be helping us. Get off them grave clothes. As, as I was reading about Philip just yesterday morning, 
Matter of fact, it was this morning. And the, the eunuch asked him, said, who, who uh, or Philip asked him, said, do you know what you are reading? He said, how can I understand unless somebody tells me? Well, there's a lot of stuff we need to be explained to. Guess what? That's what y'all sent me to school for. So I have an understanding of Scripture. And I still don't know much of it, but I, I'm not a very good learner. Now turn with me one page. Y'all just keep riding with me. Chapter 12. Verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. They want to make sure you understand that. There they made a supper. We see Martha, she's serving now, and she's not complaining at this point in time. But Lazarus, he was sitting at the table with them. Now I want you to see what happens, verse 3. Then took Mary a pound of ointment. Where do you find her at? Feet of Jesus. And she wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Listen to me. And, and like I say, Lynn did a good job explaining this this morning. Worship is not, we don't start out with singing and, and quivering and raising our hands and all that kind of Worship starts out, we have a foundation. We understand, the, we start understanding the Word of God. And then we bring our petitions to Christ, and we bring our hurts, and we bring our brokenness to Christ. And as He fixes that, then it brings us to a place where we can actually worship Him. Amen. Because we've seen Him work. Okay, we've seen Him work. She takes a year's worth of wages in a perfume bottle. And I, I preached this not too long ago, but the alabaster box, and I can't, we'll just have to do it left-handed. I wouldn't do it left-handed if I had it. It's got this long neck on it like this right here. And she takes and she breaks it where it's never able to be sealed again. And then she pours it on him. And then she takes her glory, which is her hair, according to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, and she takes her glory and she wipes his feet like a towel, the dirtiest part of his body. In worship. She says, all I got is you're worthy of everything I have. Everything I have monetarily. Everything I have as far as my pride and who I am. You're worthy of all of it. And she worships him wholly. With all she's got. Ain't that good? Amen. But you have, to, you have to learn. Then you have to put what you learn to practice. And then it brings you to a place of worship. Got one more thing I want you to see. Turn over to John chapter 20 with me. Twenty, John chapter twenty. This is the first day of the week after the crucifixion of Christ. Verse eleven, Mary stood without the sepulchre weeping, and she wept and stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeing two angels in white, one sitting at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. They say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. When she had thus said, she turned herself back, and Jesus standing, and she knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? What seekest thou? She's supposing him to be a gardener, said to him, Sir, be born him from hence. Tell me where thou hast laid him, that, uh, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned herself into him 
It said Rabino, which is to say master. And Jesus said to her, touch me not, for I'm yet, uh, I've not yet ascended to my father, but I go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples she had seen the Lord and spoken these things to her. We see Mary, one of the, one of the accounts of this, asked her, said, why are you seeking the living among the dead? He's resurrected from the dead. This is where he bought our pardon. This is where our justification comes from, from his resurrection. He, pray, he paid the sin price on the, on the cross and he went to a grave. But by the resurrection, we're justified. Just as I've never sinned. It's a judicial statement. I am justified. I am proclaimed and pronounced that I'm sinless, guiltless. I have been forgiven. Amen. I'm glad of that. But let's get to Mary a minute. Mary was coming to, to seek him. She was coming to, to pay homage to him. And she comes and she finds a risen Savior. And he says, hey, I'm going away to my father. I'm going to leave here. I'm going away to my father. You go tell my brethren. Some people might think that this is blaspheming, but it's not. What did he call Peter, James, and John, and the rest of the disciples? Right there, what did he call them? Brethren. brethren. He's the firstborn among many brethren. He's our older brother. If you're a Christian today, if you're a born-again, blood-washed, bought with the blood of Jesus Christ, Christian, he's your older brother. Firstborn among many brethren. Go tell my brethren I've raised. There's an expectation, folks. One day, one day we're going to go be with Jesus. Wherever Jesus is at. When he's in heaven, we'll be there. When he's on earth in the thousand year millennial reign, we'll be there. When he's in the new heaven and new earth in the new temple, we're going to be there. We're going to be with Jesus. There is an expectation of the king coming to set up his kingdom. God is the king of this universe right now. But Jesus Christ one day will come and be the king of this earth. And when he does, he'll rule and reign with a rod of righteousness. Are you ready for that? Have you, are you spending time at his feet? Are you spending time learning about him? Learning what, what the Bible says about him and about you and about eternity? Are you spending time putting that into practice? Test God. Now listen, be careful what I just said. Test God. Look at his word. When I, when I surrendered to preach, I sat down on my kitchen table over at Liberty's Run I sit down at my kitchen table one morning. I was getting ready to go preach at a rest home. I laid my Bible down, and I went through Scripture, and I said, it says, whatsoever I ask in your name, you'll do. Your name means your will. Anything I ask in your will, you'll do. It's not your will that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. I'm asking you today to send somebody over there that needs to be saved, that they might be saved today. <laughs> And I will surrender to preach tonight. Guess what? I'm up here and I'm preaching. I, I didn't ask Ed. I said, Ed, brother. I said, can you sing a, a, a hymn of invitation? Because he didn't have no music. He's singing like this. All right. And I, he did a good job of it. But I said, can you do it? Yeah, yeah. So we get down. I give the invitation. Everybody close your eyes. And head bowed. So if you want me to pray for you, you need salvation, you want me to pray for you. you slip your hand up. This fellow slipped his hand up. I, my heart went, I couldn't even hardly talk after that. So I prayed for the guy. And I said, if you 
if you want me to come and show you how you can be saved, just raise your hand. The fellow beside of him raised his hand. <laughs> All right, good gracious. So I called, a, I called a missionary that was with me, and he led him to Christ, and that night I surrendered to preach. Test God. When I say test God, I don't mean tempt him, but test him. Take his word. Say, this is what your word says. Put it to the test. You'll find that he's faithful. But you've got to know what his word says before you can do that. You've got to come to a place, folks, where when you test him, then you're willing to give him all that you got because you know that he's faithful and true and he make, he make him his, your Lord and master. And that's exactly what she did when she gave him everything she had. And then he shows us stuff and gives us hope for tomorrow. How's that? Do you have that hope? Do you have that hope? Have you given Christ all you got? Maybe you're here and you haven't given him all you got. Maybe you've never really put him to the test. And you don't know you can trust him. I know, you, I know if you do that, you find out you can trust him. If you give him all you got, it's all his anyway. Do you have a hope for tomorrow? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you have a hope for tomorrow? If you don't, please... Please, I'm not trying to embarrass you. Come, talk to me. I'll show you how you can have that hope and that expectation. Hope is what? It is a joyful expectation based on something. It's not a wish. I will show you how you can have that great hope. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord God, I want to thank you for this day. I thank you for the group of people that's sitting in front of me. Lord, I just thank you for the worship service today. Thank you for what you've done in my life this week. Fathers, we come to this most important time. God, I pray you work in our hearts. Open our ears, open our eyes, open our heart, God. Give us courage to do what you're dealing with us on. Father, I pray that you'll be glorified today through your word. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. You come as God leads you this morning. This is Pastor Marty Granger here at Cedar Grove, and we just want to thank you for tuning in with us this Sunday uh, and spending your Sunday morning worshiping with us here. It means so very much to us as we see people tune in week after week. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Today, as we went through the service, as you worshiped with us, if you feel like God's dealing with your heart on the fact that you're not saved and you need to make a decision uh, for him, we'd love to help you in that process. It's a simple process. You just got to agree with God. And that is that you're a sinner and you're in need of a Savior. If you'll call upon him, he will save you. The Holy Spirit's dealt with your heart and you're a Christian, and you need to make some decisions. We'd encourage you to do that as well. Now, again, we've enjoyed you being with us this Sunday, and we look forward to worshiping with you again at the midweek and next Sunday as well. In the meantime, if you need to contact us, that information will be made available. May God richly bless you, and we look forward to seeing you at the next Sunday.